Welcome to the hunt for Bigfoot. I'm Klug Uliger, your host. You know, uh, many people do believe a giant, mysterious creature called Bigfoot roams the forests of North America. True to the show's title, our mission here is the hunt for Bigfoot. Our mission is not to hunt with a gun, however, but to hunt with a camera. Up until now, we've literally had to rely on stories, myths, legends, aside from the occasional unexplained footprints or the familiar grainy footage of what appears to be a Bigfoot crossing a stream. All we've had are rumors, but perhaps not for long. We've obtained some very remarkable exclusive footage. What many believe are the actual skeletal remains of a Bigfoot. And it isn't grainy, it isn't a shaky handheld camera. It's there for you to examine. You look at it and decide for yourself. You judge. But first, come with us to southern Arkansas, where the Bigfoot activity is so commonplace. Heck, they hold an annual Falk Monster Festival there. Welcome to the natural world. A world filled with small wonders, where anything can happen. Our search leads us first to Falk, Arkansas, where one weekend of every year is dedicated to the celebration of the monster, which has roamed that wilderness for, some say, over 100 years. In this part of the country, things move at a much more manageable pace. community is centered around the people, especially the children. Time is dedicated to thriving off the land and craftsmanship, not fast food and mass production. Some might consider this lifestyle to be primitive and out of touch with the mainstream, but that is the way most of the people in Falk would like to stay. And if you were to say that the people of Falk don't know how to have a good time, well, they might have to let you know that, well, that's a lot of bull. We didn't know it at the time, but evidently we chose a same area that this creature uh, had chose for his domain also. This is the Arklatex Wilderness, a world full of natural mysteries. I know there's psychic impressions. When I have thought about these creatures, I see them living in a cave, almost in a Cro-Magnon man kind of situation. Um, I feel like that they are somewhere intellectually between man and animal. Uh, the Bigfoot phenomenon is nothing new. It's been around for centuries, millennia perhaps. It seems that Bigfoot uh, uh, captures the imagination of humans uh, worldwide. Worldwide indeed. Whether it is called a Bigfoot, a Yeti, or Sasquatch, the fact remains that sightings have occurred in so many cultures that it would lead one to ponder the existence of some unidentifiable creatures. You've got it in some sort of plastic container? Yes, it And is. it's still rotting away. I mean, it's still... Oh. It's the length of the legs. Look at the length of the feet and the heels, the portion of the heel there. I don't know of any animal in 32 years that I've skinned that had a heel like that on it. It was that protruding. And the length of the joints between the legs He's eight, the animal's eight foot long. We didn't know it at the time, but evidently we chose the same area that this creature uh, had chose for his domain also. My son saw it in broad open daylight and shot at it three times and caused a big disturbance. And, News meter come down on us like gangbusters, and we found ourselves. We felt like we'd rather be a take our chances with the, the monster than with the news meter. So we, we tried to keep them out as long as we could. But 
it finally got so widespread that it got out of hand and along about then when the movie makers came in. Well, the only time that I know of is these here two black guys was coming in from Shreesport and they came in the store here, it's about three o'clock in the morning and they were just shaking and white as a ghost and they felt sure they seen the felt monster. But I don't know, you know, if it was him or not. And then there were some hunters that I heard that seen him in the swamplands. But I didn't hear too much of that story. And that's about it. How long ago were both of these incidents? Uh, probably about three years ago. Three or four, I don't know exactly which one. So you t tell me personally, do you believe there's a creature? I think there might be something out there. Really and truly, I think there is. And... It's just hard to say. Okay? In my restaurant, I used to have truck drivers that drive 200 miles out of their way to buy a souvenir for their children that come from Fout, the home of the Boggy Creek Monster. And I asked him what was wrong. He said, nothing. And I said, Keith, what's the matter? What is it? He said, there's something funny looking in the window. And uh, I looked over there, and sure enough, there was some, like some green glowing eyes. Big old hairy face. And the doorknob. What we're watching is a series of interviews I taped of my family discussing an incident that occurred about 20 years ago near Lake Greeson on a mountain near Glenwood, Arkansas. We were in a trailer alone, myself, my two brothers, my mother, and my grandmother and something tried to get in the trailer. There was something looking in the window with reflective glowing eyes. What is it, Keith? Uh, nothing, N nothing. What is it, sweetie? Mom, I think there's something looking at me through the window. Oh, I think that's just your imagination, but well, let me check and see why. My mother got us into the kitchen. We hid under the kitchen table. And then it began to walk around the trailer. We heard heavy breathing. It was pounding on the trailer. Eventually, it did go away. However, when my father and my grandfather finally came home, the next day we found large tracks outside we couldn't identify. There were dents and scratches in the back of the trailer. And a nearby building had been vandalized as well. And in the porch, there were two large holes where something had stomped down through the porch itself. I don't know what it was. To this day, I wonder. I ain't never seen the creature. I'd like to meet it. And I've lived in this part of the country for 67 years. And I've slept in the woods all around, and I ain't never seen him, but I'd like to meet him. You know anybody who has seen him? Well, I know some people that says they've seen him, and you know, they made they made a movie of him one time. Here's how Hollywood has treated the Bigfoot phenomenon, as in these scenes from the 1975 cult classic, The Creature from Black Lake. Joe, look at this. Something's been stealing our game. You mean someone steals my traps, Joe? Yeah. Damn. A theory that many anthropologists have considered is that this creature could possibly be a mutated bear or a gorilla. Some scientists absolutely scoff at the idea of a Sasquatch, a Bigfoot, a Yeti, a skunk ape, or whatever you want to call him. Science has been proven wrong on many occasions with regard to evolution in the animal kingdom. For instance... Hey, hello. Look at this one. This one is trapped.
dưới đây Hey Joe Let's get out of here There is one good note though There's never been a report Or an incident of this creature ever attacking or harming a human being. Damn! Get something. Yeah, what do you reckon it is? Oh, I'll check it out. You've done research. We know it's in southern Arkansas or northern Louisiana. And we're willing to do it. We got the summer free. The only thing we lack are two things. That's money and wheels. You don't really want to go down there, huh? Man, I want to prove its existence. Prove its existence. <laughs> say they ain't and I ain't gonna say they are. But I just, like I say, I'd just like to meet him. If he's out there, I want to meet him. <laughs> Shake his hand. There are a lot of people that do believe it's uh, something out there in the woods and people said they have been scared away from being in the woods. Myself, I have mixed uh, feelings about it. I know there's things out in the woods and places that can't be explained, but to say this is some kind of creature uh, I would be going a little out on a limb, I think, to say that there's a thing called a monster or something we could dub a falc monster out there. Okay, I don't think it's real. I just think it's like me on a bad hair day. Because, like, not real. There's a little boggy creek monster. A man with a whole bunch of hair running through a swamp. It's not real. It's me. It's what I look like in the morning. <laughs> Uh, the Bigfoot phenomenon is nothing new. It's been around for centuries, millennia perhaps. It seems that Bigfoot uh, uh, captures the imagination of humans uh, worldwide for two reasons. One, Bigfoot seems to remind us of the beast that dwells within all of us. That part that we don't want to accept or even want to recognize. The part that's the outcast, the wild man, the unabandoned spirit in all of humankind. It's, it's often uh, that part which we try to repress and it's often the part that refuses to be repressed. And so Bigfoot reminds us of the monster that dwells within, the one we'd like to cast into the shadows, but the one that keeps creeping back into our communities. I told them, yeah, they could camp out there. days later I went out to check on them and the tent was all tore down laying on the ground and their ice chest and everything Even their was, coat, under, it was, winter time. was underneath the tent and you could see there hadn't been nobody around there for a day or two. We were in the trunk? I just, I was in my pickup. It was so up north so I just long, loaded everything up and put it in my truck and took it back up to the station. I thought maybe they'd come back looking for it, you know. <laughs> but they I kept it about call. three months and they never did show up again. Well, I guess sometime during the night, the bugger had, had scared the heck out of him. But a few, a couple of months later, my dad and my ex-wife and my children had gone down there one evening, down to the farm, looking around. And my kids went off down to the edge of the timber, about 100 yards down there playing. They come running back up there real scared. Other than they'd seen a big hairy thing down there. So my dad and my ex-wife went back down there. And he was standing right in the edge of the timber. And he said he uh, didn't act like he was here. Kind of bent over and looked at him like that. And scratched around on his body two or three times. Then he just turned and went on into the woods, not running. He just took his time about leaving. But they was already 
excited so bad they was, they were running over one another getting back to the truck. <laughs> Up in Atlanta, Texas, I had to make this woman come out with the story. Uh, she didn't want to be on tape. She did do an audio tape. She said she noticed the pears off a pear tree. This is near Falk, Arkansas, by the way. As crow flies, it's not very far through there. And said as she, as she right, right when she, about dusk, she said she see something moving in a pear orchard out there. And she went out there and said it went back into the woods. It looked like it had long hair all over it. And so she began baiting it, and she put pears all along the fence and it would come up and reach out with its long hairy arms and take the pears off the back fence. And she observed that for two or three weekends by putting the pears where it could reach for them, but she could never go outside or she could get close enough. And, uh, and she was very reluctant to tell me the story. And when I find people that are very reluctant, I say, well, they're not seeking notoriety. Uh, and I'm not seeking notoriety. I just know what I know, and I know what I saw. I know I was scared to death. Uh, me and several friends were out riding around and ended up at a place called Baikal Reservoir in north central Louisiana. And we were stopped on top of the dam. Uh, the, the moon was high. It was a high moon, uh, very bright. And uh, me and one friend were outside the car. And we were just sitting around talking, smoking cigarettes, and all of a sudden we noticed that there was something coming up the side of the dam. So we, we got quiet, waited, that something came up on, on the top of the dam, and it was very large, very big, uh, walking at a very slow gait, arms swinging, just a little bit exaggerated. And of course, we were pretty scared at the time, it was awesome. A young boy over near Uncertain Texas was walking home from school and he said a huge ape man came out of the woods and he ran all the way home. <laughs> ran out of his shoes, dropped his books, and they looked it up in the encyclopedia, his dad, and the only thing he could see was a large gorilla. I went back and interviewed the boy. The boy was shoes were still laying in the gravel road by the bow. He was not lying, he was still scared, and the sheriff was standing there with kind of a bored look like he didn't believe it. And I told the boy, I said, boy, if you're making this up, I said, you're gonna be in big trouble because I'm fixing to put you on television. Now's the time to tell me. Robert says he was back there coon hunting with coon dog and says this big hairy man came out of him and he had orange eyes and he reached out at him. My daddy shot it in the chest with a shotgun and said he didn't shoot it. He said, my daddy come running out of the woods and the coon dog's behind him. And he said, he said, I want to show you something, Mr. Mack. He said, watch this. He said, Mr. Mack, hey dogs, let's go to the woods and go hunt. Every one of those six or eight mongrel dogs went under the house whining with their tails between their legs. In uh, Falk, Arkansas, and he claims that he and a friend uh, were in the woods with their metal detector looking for uh, old Civil War relics, you know, bullets and stuff. He's, they claimed that they were on the road and uh, the creature jumped out at them and just scared the, the bejesus out of them. And they got so excited that they ran away and they got on their motorcycle and were so scared that they wrecked it on the way out of the woods. set up an interview with a, a couple and she claims uh, that her and her boyfriend were out, you know, necking or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Hi. 
something. There's nothing out there. I heard something. I know there's something out there. Reports and sightings continue to pour in. Apparently, this thing's got a mate. Of course, I guess it would have to. When the hunt for Bigfoot continues, we're going back deep into the creature's habitat. Going back into the bottoms to take a, a hunting party. There's a family from out of state coming in to go back in the bottoms and hopefully get a glimpse of the, the monster and the uh, they're going to have some camera equipment. Hopefully get a, a picture of him. There's women folks with them. And I always take a big gun not to try to kill the monster. He's never hurt nobody and we don't intend to, to hurt him. But there's wolves and alligators and a lot of animals that could have rabies stuff like that, so. Hello, Fritz. Hello, Steve. Hi. Hey, Smokey. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too. I'll see you, Sizer. We're fixing to go into the bottom, so that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's what I come down here for. You hang on. Well, The hunt began slowly, and for the better part of the morning, Smokey stayed within sight of the family, concerned about the amount of wilderness experience that the Pace family possessed. However, by early afternoon, Smokey had pushed on ahead of the family in order to scout out any dangers. But for the Pace family, the intense midsummer heat of Arkansas was more than they had bargained for, and the camouflage that had at one point seemed necessity was now a burden. Becoming more and more concerned, Smokey left his Piro and headed out on foot deeper into the woods, careful to mark the trail for the family. With each passing hour, the frustration began to show. For Smokey, the frustration was yet another day in the bottoms in search of the creature whose unproven existence haunted him. Hot, tired, and in unfamiliar surroundings, they felt betrayed and abandoned by their guide, not to mention there had been no signs of the creature. Finally, they decided to do the only thing they could think of, stay put and wait for Smokey to find them. They didn't have to wait long. And after a slightly heated discussion, it was decided that the father and Smokey would get some night vision binoculars and charter a plane. A couple of times, Steve Pace thought he spotted something, but it was never more than a wild boar or deer or wolf. 
So, this hunt for Bigfoot ended uneventfully. I do think that there is uh, some uh, unidentified creature in this area that people refer to as Bigfoot. <clears throat> I don't think that uh, he is separate and apart from the other Bigfoot, Yeti, abominable snowman sightings that other people have reported from other parts of the world. I think that all of these creatures are interrelated and belong to a similar group. I've got no idea. We've done uh, so much research and study on it. I think that it changes are its cross between something somewhat from the I think from the gorilla family or the monkey family. I feel that perhaps this creature is some sort of missing link between the primates and, and man as we know it. Uh, perhaps uh, science believed that these creatures had at one time become extinct and now we're just rediscovering them and finding that maybe they're not as uh, extinct as we had presumed. I do feel that these creatures are somewhat intelligent, but not as intelligent as man. I think that they operate to a large extent by instinct, and it's their instinct that's been able to keep them away from human beings and away from too much contact with man. I think that they instinctively have a distrust of man, and that there are a few of these creatures who have over a period of time of exposure uh, allowed themselves to become more trusting of humans and have allowed themselves to be seen and photographed and followed. But generally I feel like they have a tremendous fear of people. No, I've never been afraid of it. I've always wanted to see it bad enough that I've took all kinds of chances to try to get to see it. But I've never been lucky enough to see it. I've been in the woods where it was hollering, where we'd get it to holler. About that time, uh, it let out a loud bellowing moan, and it was close this time. It was in underbrush about 30 feet away. And then it changed rapidly. <laughs> Golly. And then it goes into a, a big upbeat racket that it works itself up into it like some of these other rackets and it work itself up into a, a screaming real loud screaming hollering sound it sounds like it's coming from deep down inside something real big maybe it's as big as an elephant and in that racket it's a real demanding sound like it's a climbing the territory telling you to get out of it. And uh, it put cold chill bumps up your back. Let's out a scream of dying and it froze my my blood. It just ran cold from it. I think that they live in some sort of cave-like situation, whether it's in Arkansas in a boggy creek type of area or maybe in the mountains in uh, in Canada someplace, but I do feel like that they congregate in caves. Um, I do not feel like that they re reproduce prolifically. I think that they perhaps have one uh, offspring at a time and that they live in very small groups. I don't think you're going to find them. If we found a Bigfoot, we'd probably find a way to use our science and culture and arts to dismiss it quickly. or. To, to make it less significant than we once thought it would be. And suddenly, something much larger than Bigfoot would come along, a, a bigger foot still. And so we need Bigfoot. We need Bigfoot to help us ask some fundamental questions about who we are as, as a people, who we are as individuals, and what it means to deal with that, that wild side within all of us. When the hunt for Bigfoot continues, we'll see some of the most remarkable footage ever recorded. Skeletal remains of an actual Bigfoot, some say of a big cat, or even a kangaroo. The jury's still out. See for yourself. What do you think? But I've got to warn you, these aren't pretty pictures. Well, the first time I heard about it, uh, it was found over in the edge of Texas over here, and uh, 
first time I heard about it, they said that uh, some boys had found the, the a skeleton of the Fowl Monster. length of the legs, look at the length of the feet and the heel, the portion of the heel there. I don't know of any animal in 32 years that I've skinned that had a heel like that on it. It was that protruded. And the length of the joints between the legs, if he's eight, if the animal's eight foot long, thereabouts assumed with the head added to it, his legs, according to that picture, has got to be four foot long. I don't know of any animal with a four foot long leg. I mean, that's just as human-like foot as you'll ever see. The foot bones are very strange looking. Yeah, the ribs, the ribs have definitely collapsed some there. I'll, I'll agree to one thing, and that's not um, a human pelvis. That, 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 that's not a human pelvis bone, from what I can tell. It's too long. These are feet. Correct. Plantigrade feet. Certainly big feet, but it's certainly not a digitigrade animal. It's not walking on its digits at all. Think it's walking flat-footed? Definitely walking flat-footed. Wasn't long until some people got a hold of me and, and wanted me to go examine that skeleton and see if, if I thought it was a, a, the remains of what had been seen around this part of the country so much. Well, when I got over there and looked it over, I found something very, very interesting. Looking at the thing in the pictures there, as best you can tell, it's the only thing I can think of that would compare to would possibly be a, a gorilla. Uh, your larger mountain types, but now that's, it's definitely a humanistic type uh, deal with the, the, the back feet with a heel like that. I don't know of anything but a human that has a heel like that on it. All your other animals, your bear, your cats, uh, first place your cats don't really have a, what you call a heel. The only other thing be your bear. They don't uh, protrude like that, so I don't know. It's a human, a humanistic form, as far as I can tell. The pelvis is what I'd really like to be able to see a little bit better. Uh, but the, the hands and feet are very primate looking. It's an opposable thumb there. Right, yeah. I can see the thumb, see the long fingers and the long hand. That's more gorilla-like. <laughs> Very strange skeleton, but at least this one you can recognize as being something from this planet. At least it has feet and phalanges and all the bits and pieces that you'd hope for. This thing was, was the right size. Its hair was the right color in the right length. It was capable of taking the, the long strides that this creature had, had uh, proved that he could do around here. In my 32 years of taxidermist, I haven't ever seen anything uh, like that. I really haven't. And I've scanned a lot of animals, and I just the heel and the foot is impressive. It's got it almost designate something's walking upright. The animals that eat all the meat off the bones. And it was so fresh that it didn't even stink yet. It, it hadn't even started uh, stinking. And it was still a, a blood color. And they had strained all the meat off the bones and they were still intact. Except its head was gone and the wolves was what had been eating on it. And after we got uh, some expert help in on it, we was told that, that its head would be the first thing that the animals could take loose from its body. And the head never was found, as far as I know. The, the, 
It's amazing. That's amazing. I'm telling you. Um, I'd be very surprised if wolves had removed the head. Uh, the head does remove from the body very easily, but the only material in the head that's available for a scavenger to eat would be the brain. And if this animal is as large as it looks like it is, that skull would have been very thick and very difficult for the wolves to get into. Most scavengers go after the viscera first, the guts, and remove those. And once that has been removed, they'll dismember an animal and take back leg bones, arm bones, or something to a den. And yet I notice in this, all the appendages are still present. Uh, so I have, I have a hard time believing that scavengers have been to work on this. It's everybody to his own guess. It's certainly interesting. It's definitely not human. Certainly I wouldn't want to make a, a decision as to what it is right now. Uh, there's plenty of other further analysis that could be done. Uh, back in the laboratory. Well, certainly it is a, a, a very large animal. That's uh, plain to see. Um, and I, I can say for certain that it's not human. Uh, again, if we had uh, the, the, the vital uh, bones that are not here, such as the skull uh, and, and the distal bones of the, of the extremities, then that would give us a pretty good idea as to what, what we have. And certainly it is a big creature, uh, not human, but at this point without further examination, um, I can't say as to what, uh, what species it is. In order to further examine the carcass and try to identify a specific species, the remains were loaded and taken to the coroner's office in Bossier City, Louisiana. Hopefully there, more could be learned about the remains. Once the remains arrived at the lab, testing and identification began immediately. As with all remains, photographs were taken from every possible angle. Once the photos were taken, the lid was removed. An offensive odor was released into the air. You were asking me uh, why I felt like these remains were not human. Uh, although there are some similarities uh, with regard to this uh, possibly being human, there are other inconsistencies which would uh, make me realize that uh, this, in fact, is, is a non-human, non-human remains. Uh, first of all, the, the scapula or shoulder blade of a human is much smaller. Uh, you see the broad blade of, of this scapula and, and the, the large muscle attachments. Uh, it's just absolutely inconsistent with that of a human. If we look at the vertebra, this being an entire human backbone, you see that it's, it's only a, uh, about 19 or 20 inches in length, uh, as opposed to the vertebra here, which begins in this area and ends in this area. It measures almost 50 inches. Another inconsistency with regard to this being human is the pelvis. Uh, the pelvis begins here and it ends here. It's very long and narrow. However, with Human pelvis. You see a short and broad uh, pelvic basin. It's very uh, rounded and shallow. So there are uh, three absolute inconsistencies with regard to this uh, 
being human. So you just said this is not a human. This is definitely not a human. Once determining that the remains were not human, X-rays of the remains were taken to locate any marrow which could assist the process of DNA identification. Next, a team of university biologists were brought in to examine the carcass, and after an exhaustive and thorough examination, no known species could be positively identified. Where did you mark off the last of the cervical, or the last of the thoracic, sorry? Now we're going to take that one all the way, all the way out, yeah. Okay, I've got 51 centimeters, one foot eight inches. Let's move back to the legs, femurs, right next to the patella there. Femur junction. Okay, we're looking at about 35 centimeters. Two inches, 14 inches. Let's go down the leg, go down to the calcanus, and we'll go back up to junction here on the femur. And we have 36 centimeters, about 14 and a half inches. Finally, let's do the metacarpals. All the metacarpals here. Up there, I can't read that. 32 centimeters, one Good. foot, one inch. I would be going a little out on a limb, I think, to say that there's a thing called a monster or something we could dub the Falk monster out there. I think there might be something out there. Really, truly, I think there is. So you think that was a the creature then, huh? I, he knows it was. You believe him? Oh, yeah. So you know any other stories that have, that have happened around here, people who claim to have seen it? Oh, there's a bunch of them. So you believe there's something to it then? Right? Oh, yeah. My grandpa seen it. So I just think it's like me on a bad hair day. I think it's most people think that it was this train wreck of a circus train, that there used to be a hurdle track up there, and that it was one of the freaks or a gorilla that got out. I really believe that there's some folks uh, really believe in it, and then there's some that don't believe in it. And uh, uh, personally, I've never seen anything that would, uh, you know, that would make me believe that they uh, existed. But uh, uh, who am I to say that there, there's not? You know, those who believe in it, well, I don't, I don't question them. You know, because they're, I know some of them are, are real good people that do believe in it. It's just something out of the ordinary, I guess you'd say that. We've never seen before. We never saw anything like it since. It was amazed at whatever it was in the eyes was I'm six foot tall, the eyes was lost six foot off the ground. And uh, it come down the levee, stepped across the creek, never didn't make a splash or anything. Uh, the wildlife and fisher people said another warning, Mike and Annie. They said uh, this thing weighs enough and you run from it, you'll tangle up in brush and it'll crash on through and get you. Said if you shoot it with a small caliber gun, uh, uh, matted hair on it is like a bear. It will not penetrate as good. And said you could be in big trouble. I picked them up as being gentle giants in their demeanor. I don't think that they're aggressive. I don't think that they have uh, bad intentions. I think that their main purpose is to be left alone, for people to leave them alone and let them exist the way they want to. I don't think that they, uh, they want to necessarily have any association with our society. And we've got another uh, situation here that we're trying to uh, make sure that that when the story is told and that it needs to be told as, as truthfully as it possibly can be and to where it won't reflect on any one family.
I don't think we'll ever find a Bigfoot because I think we're looking in the wrong place. I think, uh, I think what I fundamentally believe about Bigfoot is the search has just begun. So it looks like the hunt for Bigfoot continues. From the Native American Sasquatch to the Tibetan Yeti. From ancient Babylon to accounts in China 200 years before the birth of Christ. All we've had are rumors up until now. In this sometimes too predictable world, it seems that the earth holds no more surprises. The hunt for Bigfoot aims to challenge that notion. This is Klug Uliger, and I'm here to tell you I'm not going to ever give up the hunt for Bigfoot. <laughs>